was six months old. We were in some little town, small hotel, and I fell down a full flight of stairs at the bottom, to the bottom. They come running up. I sat up and just shook, shook my head and shook it off and didn't cry. So they knew I wasn't hurt. And Houdini says, that was sure a buster, meaning a fall, because that's the only time it was used. It meant a Bronco buster or a fall. It was never used as a name. My father said, well, that would be a good name for him. It don't sound bad. Buster Keaton, born Joseph Frank Keaton, was an American actor, comedian, film director, producer, screenwriter, and stunt performer. He was best known for his silent films in which his trademark was physical comedy with a stoic, deadpan expression, which earned him the title The Great Stone Face. In 1917, he met Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle at Joseph Schenck's studio in New York and was hired as a co-star and gag man. He appeared in a total of 14 Arbuckle shots running into 1920. Keaton and Arbuckle became close friends and Keaton was one of the few people to defend Arbuckle's character during accusations that he was responsible for the death of actress Virginia Rapp. The studio was renamed Buster Keaton Productions in 1922. Beginning in 1923, he started essentially writing, directing and starring in his own feature films, mostly free of interference from producer Joseph Skenk. These films represent some of the purest expressions of an artist who filled his movies with gag after gag. He made a series of two real comedies, including One Week, and the electric house. Keaton then moved to full length features. Keaton's fortunes changed dramatically at the end of the silent era. Signing on as a contract star at MGM during the transitional years to talkies, he found himself increasingly constrained by studio policies and practices. Personal setbacks, a painful divorce from Natalie Talmadge, whom he had married in 1921 when his stardom was in ascent, and a debilitating drinking habit also took a toll. By the mid-1930s, he had settled into a steady stream of less celebrated roles in low-budget comedy shots, cameo roles and features, and work behind the camera, chiefly as a gag writer and comedy advisor. The reputation of his silent comedies depended fragilely on rare screenings of a few surviving films at the Museum of Modern Art and other art film venues in the United States and abroad.
It is important to learn a little bit about how 1920s was in order to understand the rise of Buster Keaton as a star. 1920s was the time referred as Roaring Twenties or Jazz Age, when Prohibition, Flappers, Jazz, Ford Model T are the known keywords that describe the 1920s the best. After the World War I, with a great amount of cash flow to America, Metropolitan centers had become popular and widespread throughout the nation, and there was a rapid growth in usage of automobile, telephone, motion pictures, radio, and other electric appliances. It was the time when functionality was praised along with aesthetics and beauty. The article talks about how Americanism had become a central idea in 1920s, but this idea was often misunderstood as an aggressive advancement of society in terms of economy and social development, which civilized habit was often forgotten. However, the article explained how misunderstood Americanism was to other countries. It was not just about a rapid growth in everything and everywhere. But it was a compilation of diverse original girls that had contributed in forming of Americanism. Because such acceleration was only permitted in certain areas such as Northeast and Midwest and few sections in South and West. The rest of the areas remained pretty rural until they gained access to electricity in the 1930s. Nevertheless, this variation was the reason why jazz had become a thing along with George O'Keefe's painting and William Faulkner's novels for example. This variation made 1920s a booming age in cultural richness. Connecting the dots back to Buster Keaton, this variation was somehow just like Buster Keaton himself. His early childhood consisted with growing up in a vaudeville family, and later on when his thematic career took off, everything around him was all technological and industrial. Buster Keaton was a perfect example of boiling tradition and the modernism down to one. Most people agree that the big three names in silent comedy were Charlie Chaplin, Harold Lloyd, and Buster Keaton. While Chaplin's movies made the most money per film and Lloyd made the highest grosses in total, Keaton was a bit more of an acquired taste. They didn't always make money, and certain critics at the time, namely the trade papers and the New York Times, were not kind at all to his breed of comedy. Still, his humor has stood the test of time. His stone-faced demeanor feels right at home in today's deadpan comedy space, and his amazing acrobatic stunt work remains incredibly influential, most notably to Jackie Chan. Woven into his films, of course, was Keaton's trademark comedy, brilliant timing and patented facial expressions. In his early two reelers, the laugh-making included a mastery of the slapstick pie. His work also featured Keaton's penchant, for doing his own stunts and he became somewhat of a Hollywood legend, not just for his faults but for the lack of injuries. Three Ages was Keaton's first feature as director and he swung for the fences immediately. A parody of D.W. Griffith's three and a half hour 1916 epic Intolerance, Three Ages intercuts three different eras of human history caveman times, ancient Rome, and the Roaring Twenties, following the lead character in each Keaton all three times as he attempts to find love. The basic boy attempting to court girl storyline for each of the ages allows Keaton to explore many different avenues for comedy, employing physical gags and prop humor specific to those different times. Keaton throughout his career making independent shots and features was all about crafting specific bits that showed off his timing, his reactions, and his supreme athleticism. While the shots retroactively feel like a precursor to Looney Tunes, a basic framework to contain various hilarious set pieces, Keaton made a point to spend time crafting the narrative of his features, making sure they work both as films and as gag depositories. While Three Ages showed Keaton's potential for scale and scope in his direction, the other three films each showcase a specific aspect of his talent, beginning with his arguable masterpiece, 1926's The General, a movie that was incredibly ahead of its time in the untapped field of action comedy. The story of a Civil War nobody who chases down a stolen prize locomotive known as the General, who then turns it around and heads back the way he came with enemy soldiers on his trail all the while, gave the film a glorious percussive sense of pace, where Keaton was able to show off his acrobatics as well as his sense of humor. 
Keaton's work may have not been for everybody at the time, but he is as the best of any of the major silent comedians. No most of our comedy today is based on improvisational dialogue which kind of gets old it's the tone and delivery often deadpan and usually at the expense of a sad sack main character that strikes so close to bust up It is undeniable that Buster Keaton was much more known as a comedian but as a filmmaker he did bring a lot of considerations in his films To him, it was not just about delivering one good laugh to people. He made sure that he kept up with ever-changing industry standards and differences in audiences' taste, and he proved that through his work of feature comedy films. His first feature, Three Ages, was not a bad film, but it had earned many mixed reviews from the audiences. The film was able to catch high row of the audience on the point, but the low row audiences were rather confused about the film entirely. However, the failure did not stop him from trying, and his effort paid off right away. His second feature film, Our Hospitality, was able to satisfy highbrow and lowbrow audiences altogether. C.S. Sewell from Moving Picture World, a magazine at the time, made a remarkable review on the film by saying how the film encompassed every kind of drama in filmmaking. It was a straight drama, melodrama, farce, and comedy boiled down to one single film. Buster Keaton was a filmmaker who had his heart in proving film comedy further down the road.